Good evening, my friends. Today, I am going over Boulder's Gate 3. I'll talk a little bit about the combat, but you'll have to see it in action a little bit. But unfortunately, this is just a short video I'm doing today to go over some of the things you can do in the game. Go over graphics and stuff, and what I think players are going to have an issue with in this game. So, let's get on it. First off, where I'm staying at is, your, is a campsite. You have a lot of different campsites in the game. Campsite is where you're going to go pretty much a lot of times to regenerate your health and replenish your powers. Like for instance, I play on PlayStation, so hit R1, you go to your actions. You see here, seeing smite, uh, branding smite, reckless attack. You can use these, but eventually these will go dark. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see I have three axe counters uh what's that telling you is once i use this move three times i know the searing smite is once i use it once that's it it's done it's it's gone and i know that's the same way the uh branding smite that disappears too and i just have regular attacking after that uh <clears throat> You come here to recharge your powers. It's the same way with uh, healers. Your cleric right here. You should be able to get in the beginning game. I don't know how long she stays with you, but can't afford to stay idle. She has healing powers. That heals the whole party. You could have used that so many times. Uh, what's this? Yeah, as you look down below, you will have the ruins. One, two, three. You can use this three times. Ruin one. You can use that four. Trying to see where the uh... oh yeah healing wound you can use that twice. I'm pretty sure you've got like one other that you're gonna use once, but. You can use this attack so many times, and you basically need to come back to camp and recharge. So, your camp is what you use that for. Now, in order, order to recharge, you hit that camp. Uh, and it turns to night. And when it does, you get, hit the, your, you click on your bedroll again. And it will ask you to pick the number of food you want to use to recharge your allies with. Now, it is crucial in this game that you literally loot everything. Okay? Loot everything. Now, I'm not sure if this is also uh, a big deal with the rest of the vendors in the game. But, each vendor has only a certain amount of gold that they uh, carry on them. So be wise on what you pick up and how much you pick up. Anyway, the reason I say loot is because you'll find food and drinks. Water does not count in this game. That's it. But you'll use that to build up, which I'm going to sacrifice some food to show you now. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to sleep. 
And we switched our bedtime clothes. Which, by the way, in this game, for some reason, they have nudity in it. I don't know why. But, uh, they do. And if you can't, if you haven't already noticed, the graphics are like crazy. The graphics are pretty good in this game. So I will say this. And so far, I'm going to tell you now, this is not like Boulder's Gate 1 and 2, where you're increasing your levels like crazy. I may be level 5 to you, that's low. Actually, to me in this game, that's. You're high. You're, you're, that's pretty strong. <laughs> uh, they made this game based after D&D. &D, pretty much. So if you don't like dice rolling, this is not the game for you. You have to dice roll when, you have, when you're picking a lock. You have to dice roll when you're threatening, persuading, distracting enemies. Yeah, it, it's, it, it can be a handful. So, back to the camp situation. To fully heal, you just click on your bedroll like this. And I'll bring up your long rest and a bunch of inventory, a bunch of stuff. You see I have like endless amount of food. <laughs> On this, I'm simply just going to use a supply pack. I got a bunch of them. <clears throat> that automatically brings your stuff up to 40. Otherwise, you would have to work everything up to 40. Now you can go over 40. That's okay. Why gathering? It's no big deal. But you'll do that. You'll fully rest. You're lucky to cut into a movie scene the with me. The voice of the absolute is strong here, and getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it, but it's good to see you're making progress. It's a good thing you decided to infiltrate the cultists rather than fight them. The Absolute has already mustered an impressive army, and its forces still grow. Does what happened in the Grove bother you? I respect that. Not many have the ability to know what they want and do what they want, regardless of... So one of the parts lives. in the game is you run out of Grove. I don't like the woman there, she beat Her children. Runs deeper than so... She's In the grove, yeah, the woman there beat the children, was going to kill a child over a little theft. Virginity. So I end up turning on she them, killing her whole camp. This woman here is my guardian, so she's protecting it's been me. A very long time since someone did that for me. I'm grateful. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. I just hope my powers last long enough to see this through. Like I said, it, it, this game is huge. It's really, really huge. <sighs> Alright. Now that this has happened, uh, you should be fully restored. Now, let's talk about vendors real quick. Like I said, I'm going to go over a few things of you in the game. Uh, characters' attacks are limited. I already went over that. 
you need to rest a lot of times to recharge your guys. And this, I would do it quite frequently after a certain amount of battles, unless you think you're good. And of course, uh, you got to see a little movie scene, you got to see the graphics at work, which is pretty badass. Your decisions does affect you in the game, keep that in mind. That's what I was talking about vendors and gold. Like, here's a vendor right here. Yeah, you file my camp somehow. So you see, hit trade. And then I'll pop you up as vendor, which he has 333 gold, 338 gold available on him. Now you do have weight capacity, so keep that in mind. So I'm looking to get rid of some weight. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of... Stark just armor. Just before I do that completely. Okay, she's got 14. And then get rid of the single sword. Ring. See if she's got anything. the type to carry books so <laughs> so we're gonna leave that once you pay attention when you watch this video I have put in for eight four to eight items there that equals up to 326 gold to borrow with okay now if I need something from here take a quick look <clears throat> and always always this guy will always have food somewhere if it's inventory if you uh, haven't messed with them yet. Now I slept, uh, um, uh, so I, I slept at the camp. He has redid his deal to where he has more food. So look, I just got the supply pack back. Boom. Now that, he has a cucumber. Kiwi. A spicy shrimp soup. Fish. More fish. Pitcher of beer. Then you got healing potions. Theft tools. Then we're gonna go down to the bottom. And yes, everything you sell him, he keeps supply on. So if you have uh, friends that come and play this game, you can easily come back in here. Look for weapons for them, buy them, drop them onto the ground for them, and they can pick them up and attach them to their guys. We'll go over that here in a minute. He's got nothing else. That's cool. So I'm being a little short here. So Easy enough. So I have 351. All you need is 344 to match his. Except you bought it. Now go to trade. Now on trade, it's a little bit different story. Uh, we're selling him stuff now. So where I'm at, I got all these scrolls. He's got like 46 left. There's really nothing else in there I could sell him. Let's 
it's always good, by the way, to have thieving tools. Because you can break a lot when rolling dice. Alright. You see how his goal went from 300, like 40, 380 some, down to 45. The minute he runs out of gold, you can't sell him no more stuff. What's great about this guy is every time you come to the camp, his gold resets. Not only that, he has a good 100% attitude and a 33% discount on stuff. Now, like I said earlier, like I said, everything you sell him, he holds on to. So if you have a friend that joins, your friend isn't going to be able to bring his character over. You will have to make a new character on your game. Now, when he does make a new character and brings him over, he will automatically level up to your level. Was this good? You will have no money though. Uh, there will be party gold, but simple. Whatever class he's rocking, you just come in here. Say he's going to need some boots and gloves. You buy him these boots, buy him these gloves, buy him some armor. Whatever class he is, pick up some armor. Say he's a warrior, he needs a bad sword, here's a great sword plus one. Boom, pick that up for him. Uh, I have not seen a whole lot that supports a mage for weapons and armor, really. I, re I really haven't. That's kind of scaring me a little bit. Maybe there is, I'm just overlooking it. But, whew. Uh, my opinions, scrolls, hold on to them, don't sell them. They can help you in the long run. Uh, but yeah, pick up armors and weapons for your for your, guy, your your pal, your buddy, who you play with. And then once you buy them, back out. You just got alone. L2, press down on your left thumbstick. Go to your inventory. Oh no, look, you need a pair of boots. No problem. Boom. Drop item. And the boots be right there on the ground. And they can come pick it up and attach it to their guys. That simple. That easy. Now. Like, I have a party of four. This is even badass. Be because I have a party of four. My buddy's character isn't attached, to, uh, it's an out. So, when your buddy leaves, his character stays in the game. This, so since I'm not using his character, his character is in this wardrobe. Okay, now I just got a mission telling me that my wizard is a, gotta commit suicide to kill himself to get forgiveness. So I'm gonna be losing my mage. Now, I can either bring him out, which is another warrior. Or, if I want to, I maybe even get a, a henchman as a character. In order to get a henchman as a character, pretty simple. You're going to look in your camp for this guy over here. He looks like he's half dead. Isn't gonna hold up his own. Talk to him. Fate spit. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Now, if you have a guy that died in battle and you don't have anything to resurrect him, this guy, with like, depending on the price, 100, 200 gold, he will bring back that character life. If you need a new henchman, he will talk to you about hiring a hireling. Or, if you don't like your class, you can just, boom, change your class, pay 100 gold, and you get to rechange your whole class around what you want. Fortunately, I can't hire a hireling until I lose somebody, so I'm thinking about testing this out the minute that that wizard dies to see if I can't get a wizard. So, that part I don't know much about. I won't know until my wizard kills himself. 
Now, on another note, some of your higher, some of your guys you uh, that you run around with battle with are good, and some are evil. So do be careful. There was this rogue thief that traveled with me. Uh, I camped one night, and I did a little movie clip to where it showed him over top of me. And apparently he was a vampire. He ended up getting staked by me. So he was no more. Uh, my wizard. He's pretty powerful. I'm not going to lie. It's going to suck when I lose him. But he comes with a cost. He is cur He was cursed. So he has to exor absorb magical items to stay alive. Or he explodes. But I think they put a time stop on right now. So you just gotta watch out. Uh, my cleric over here and this goblin looking creature over here. These two were going at it. I woke up one morning, the cleric was literally standing over top. Uh, the goblin creature and was about to cut her throat. I talked her out of it because I needed both of them. Yeah, so this game, this game's full of twists and turns. So. I went over a bunch of stuff with you on this clip, on this video, I did a short one. It's going to be like about between 20 to 25 minutes, so definitely comment down below on what you, else you want to know. Hit that like, hit the follow, and I'll go over the comments and try to hit or touch base with anything that you guys want to figure out about it. Because this game definitely threw me in a loop when I started playing it. I wasn't expecting this to be a D&D based game. Almost. So a lot of people will like it, a lot of people won't. But like I said, if there's something you want to know, comment. Hit that like button, follow me. And y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed this game. Ciao.